Tennessee takes care of business against Tennessee Tech Saturday final score 56 to nothing and guys it was kind of exactly what we thought it would be and uh, resulted in a shutout here on this Fall Quest mini podcast. Guys, positives, things to build on. I mean, wh what was your main takeaways from this game? AP, we'll start with you. A lot offensively, a lot defensively as well with four turnovers. It's just worrisome that they've not been able to run the ball. I mean, Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh. I know they lost today to, you know, Western Michigan. But <laughs> to not be able to run it on Tennessee Tech, I mean, like, to me, like, I wanted to see Tennessee throw it a bunch in this game because I felt like the passing game needed it. But – to not be able to run it when you want to run it, that's a head scratcher to me. And I mean, is it sim as simple as, you know, taking Cooper out and moving Carvin, you know, to center is just weakened them so much? I mean, I guess we'll find out whenever Cooper gets back, and I expect him to be back next week. Yeah, Ben, uh, any any major takeaways in the game? That it's it's not a good football game to watch, even if you're a Tennessee fan. It's kind of boring just because of what it is. But obviously, Tennessee some pauses moving into the swamp. Only Austin could be asked the question about positive takeaways and, and talk about a negative for his tell, for his. Tell answer. me he's wrong, though. He's not wrong. <laughs> but uh, I will stick to, to being positive and say uh, that the defense needed those turnovers. If anything, just to, to see the, the fruits to their labor coming to fruition. Because I, I honestly wasn't that concerned about the lack of, of, of turnovers because they were in, they were in good position. Yeah. It'd be one thing if they weren't getting turnovers and they weren't in good position the first two games. They, they just couldn't secure their hands on the football, and, and they were obviously able to do so today. Uh, four interceptions would have evened out the turnover margin on the season if, if Hendon Hooker uh, had not fumbled twice. But uh, Jalen McCullough comes through with an interception that, that was thrown right to him, but I thought he took a step forward today. Uh, he had some, some situations in the slot against Pittsburgh where he got beat. And, and today he read two, two slants over the, over the middle of the field perfectly and broke on the ball and uh, broke the pass up. He, he looked good today. Solon Page has a, has a pick six. Uh, Alante that Taylor. That was good to say. Yep, absolutely. A good story there. Alante Taylor looks like a, a cannonball being shot out uh, on his interception. Just And he got uh, two free cookies for everybody. <laughs> two free cookies for everybody, indeed. So uh, that, that was the biggest positive, that the defense didn't let Tennessee Tech do anything that, that they shouldn't be able to do for the most part, and, and you're able to walk away with, with some turnovers. You mentioned those fumbles from Hooker. Only lost one. The other one was on the exchange that he fell on top of. A nasty hit down there on a play where he, he got out of harm's way about four or five times. Uh, a little gingerly coming off the field. Good to see him go back in there and play. But uh, Austin, it looks like it doesn't matter if it's Joe Milton, if it's Hendon Hooker, if it's Harrison Bailey. Tennessee's offense cannot connect down the field. Again, it reared its ugly head today. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, the first throw of the game was a good throw. Yeah. Dropped by Javante Payton. Then, later in the action, you know, Hendon Hooker overthrows the intended receiver. Harrison Bailey threw a, a, a good solid ball on his first deep ball and then overthrew a receiver after that. I mean, again, you're not going to hit on them all. Um, but still, against Tennessee Tech, mm -hmm. I mean – you know, to me, the the worst one, and, and I did not. I, you guys might have been watching more than me. The one where Jalen Hyatt got twenty yards behind the secondary. Did Hendon Hooker get hit on that play? Yes. yes. And yes. that's why the ball looked like a punt. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think but, I didn't see a replay, but it looked like the defender's helmet may have hit yeah. Hooker's arm. Okay. And so, like, you know, there you go. But I mean, like, they're drawing up plays, and got and 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 Tennessee's got enough speed to get open. You know, I mean, I get, like, they're not crazy um, about the overall speed of the receiving core, but they're... It's been good enough so far. It's been good enough through three yeah. games. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they at some point, one would think that law of averages says you hit on them. Yeah, the problem with the receivers isn't the speed. It's just that they're not handling the nuanced details of, of running routes. And, and that's, to me, when Eric and, and Austin points out that kind of all three quarterbacks have struggled this season... With, with consistently throwing the football, it, it tells me that, you know, it, it's the whole passing game, not just a quarterback, because the, there's so many different issues going on. E each, each play has a, a, a different issue as to why the deep ball uh, wasn't caught. So uh, I, I think Josh Heupel deserves a lot of credit, and I don't think it's being talked about enough, the, the plays that he is calling to, to get some guys open. 
but the guys just aren't executing right now. And against Tennessee Tech, you, you get away with it. But against Pittsburgh, you don't. And against Florida in the Swamp next week in primetime, you, you definitely won't be able to get away with it. Uh, two more things before we, we go here. Let's talk offensive line right here. Um, Cade Mays, uh, you know, got banged up a little bit. He came back out on the sideline. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, just the I panic. Mean, like, no, no, just the – I mean, like, if that's not the most Cade play ever, you know, I mean, I didn't he's looking play. this way away at somebody, and he, he finally got a chance to be on defense for a change. And he didn't get called for a penalty. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, he, it, that was a, that was a good spear. That was yeah, a I'm, I'm going to have to go back and watch it because I didn't see. I just saw he went out. He was not in. Came back out on the sideline. But the uh, point of the matter is the offensive line is not a finished product. Uh, you know, we Cooper Mays is going to be back. Jerome Carvin will slide back down to guard. Now, whether that, what are they going to do with Cade moving forward? It's tough to, it's tough to take anything away from this game, especially well, when you don't run and, block well. Well, they didn't put Crawford in there nearly early enough. So, no. I mean, in my opinion, it'll be the same starting five you saw to start the season when, you know, when mm. Cooper gets back. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. That, and when they put him in, they put him at left tackle, too. They, yeah, they, they see, like, yeah, it looks like if you were going to slide Cade mm-hmm. inside, you wouldn't be bouncing Darnell around. Yeah, so, so maybe not Florida, but I still think they're going to try to do something on that offensive line regardless moving forward but finally what? go ahead what <laughs> what what do you do along the offensive line you and I have talked about it yeah Th- this is just missing out on Riley Locklear and Karon Karon Calvert the big blow yeah. yeah I mean just both of those guys I mean I, I don't know that they're big time SEC quality starters from game one to game two but they're good depth pieces and and Tennessee's offensive line depth is is being so tested right now and it's only the third game of the season, conference play hasn't even started. So, I I agree with you. You got to figure something out yeah. along the offensive line. But what? But and again, to Austin's point, you know, we kept on saying Jeremiah Crawford, Jeremiah Crawford. He did not play as much as we thought he would, and he only stayed on the left side as well. And so, um, it'll be interesting. Maybe that's something down the line. We'll have to see. But uh, we'll, we'll end things here. Um, of course, it's what everybody wants to talk about. Uh, Joe Milton did not play this football game today. Hendon Hooker tied a career high three touchdowns. Thought he looked okay at times. Uh, if you're Josh Heupel, does anything change? How are you guys handling? We'll start with UAP. How are you handling the quarterback situation this week? I mean, I don't know. I, I think that ultimately, I you know, uh, that's up to him. Um, next week, I think it all depends on how Joe's moving around. Yeah. You know, um, you know, if if he moves around, I can see a scenario where he starts. Uh, otherwise, if he's just, if he, I think Hendon starts. But if if Joe can play, he plays probably. Yeah. Um, it's pretty clear it's those two. Um, I don't think Harrison Bailey's got, you know, any kind of chance to see any kind of action anytime soon. I'd be shocked if he plays um, anytime over the next month. Wouldn't yeah. you guys be? No, I mean, I, that's, be. I, mean I, you know, I know he's a hot-button issue. I'm just saying, like, when you look at today, he didn't come in until late in the third. Yeah. You know. And the I mean, game was clearly out of reach. He was the number two quarterback today, and they didn't throw him in there in the first half at all. But I mean, you had Hendon Hooker playing behind clearly a reserve offensive line, and – uh, again, we're just we're seeing. I think it's pretty evident where he is in, in the pecking order right now. Yeah, I don't know what you do if you're Josh Heupel because you you see the the big play potential with with, with Joe. Joe but the, the and I know Hooker's more turnover prone, but he to me is more consistent. Yeah, and, and gives you the dynamic to run. That, that's that's my thinking, and, and I I I'm not in Team Milton, Team Hooker because I, I I think. Your team mm-hmm. hates Bailey, though. We know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because Swain told him that. Yeah, because, because Swain, Swain told and you Austin uh, <laughs> told me to. Uh, but I, I just – I would start Hooker, but that doesn't mean, like, I'm team Hooker. Because yeah. when, when you're team Hooker, then, then you start rooting for Milton to, to not succeed and, and Bailey to not succeed. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand those of you who are just team one guy and just can't wait for, for the Your other team one to balls. make mistakes. Exactly my point. So – uh, I would start Hooker for, for what Austin said. The, the turnovers are, are worrisome, but even like today on the fumbles, there's a, a handoff that kind of went wrong as this cooler. Uh, I was wondering like what that was, Ben. Not me farting. It's the cooler <laughs> behind me farting. Um, but uh, the, the, the miscommunication on the handoff, and then even the other fumble, the first one, I mean, he gets hit in a freakish way right on yeah. his knee. I, I was surprised he was able to, to stay in the game. So the turnovers concern you, but I, I think Hooker's more consistent Let's at this point. The Vols haven't won in Gainesville since 2003. I think every Vol fan would be okay if they rolled Parker Ball at their quarterback if they won the football game next week. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I think that you know while while there is, you know, a nice debate 
constantly in the general quarters about who should the quarterback be. I think everybody would agree if they can win at the Swamp, they don't care who it is because it just doesn't happen. Here's the thing that I think us three can all agree on, all the fans can agree on, there's not a perfect solution. So Tennessee needs to hit the recruiting trail, hope that that they're striking cold with with Taven Jackson or or go get a second quarterback because there's not a perfect solution right now and they're going to have to find some help there uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. All right, so there were some recruits in-house as well today, and um, we'll, we'll talk to some of those over the weekend and see what they thought of uh, a game day. Of course, plenty of columns, film rewatch, a whole lot of content coming up on the website over the weekend. And, and go and support, and, and he did not ask me to do this, I'm, I, because he's one of us, he's a Volquester. Jcrest63 at Craven Wings. They struck a deal with, with Jacob Warren, and tonight and tonight only, if you mention Jacob's touchdown today, you get 87 cent wings. Oh, that's so, nice. For the next 24 hours. So there you go. Sounds like a, a good lunch to, to have while you're watching some NFL football. They have tomorrow. two locations, one's in Seymour and the other one's at Choto out of Farragut. College ball tonight. So do that tonight and stay dialed in all week long for continued coverage here at VolQuest. For Ben McKee and Austin Price, I'm Eric Kane. Tennessee, a 56 to nothing winner over Tennessee Tech here in week number three of the 2021 season.